What's up everybody? There'll be probably a second intro to this video. I tried to film this video over the weekend and I realized I left my charger for my editing laptop at work so I couldn't edit this video so I'm posting it today. You're welcome. Check it out. It has a kickstand. Let me show you how I made it. Well here we are again folks. Welcome to uh, another episode. My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com and uh, yeah, what's up everybody, let's get started. So I was trying to figure out how to make a kickstand and found some holes and I found me a little top right here. So this is doo -doo -doo -doo, a 5 8 18 tap, pretty big tap and it just happens that there are holes inside right there see them down in there those big holes so I was actually able to tap those out Let's see if I can get the camera in there because I can't get my head in there see those holes might be too close but I was able to actually tap those holes and then I went around the shop looking for a bolt and out of everything that I own all this stuff there's a bunch of crap. This is really my only miscellaneous big nuts and bolts. Well, I happen to have these. Now these are actually a stud, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for a shock absorber for a car, like for your sway bar or something like this. But before I got to that, I tried to thread one, but I didn't actually have the right tap, but I realized that a pipe, right, a 3 8 pipe has the right thread, it's just tapered. So I thought, well, that's fine, maybe if I have a tap, I can actually thread it, even though it's tapered, if I thread it all the way through the tap, which is actually what I did here, I threaded this all the way through the tap, that this would fit, but it doesn't. So I got lucky, it happens to turn out it happened to, to turn out that this is actually the right size. Now these have these pressed washers on here to hold the rubber grommet that goes in here of some sorts. I actually don't remember where these came from. But they were something with shocks, absorbers, sway bars, something. But that, I was originally thinking, well if I get a bolt that's this big, the head is going to be so big that it's not going to clear this. Well, these happen to have two soft edges on them where you put a wrench on there and tighten it down. Well, to my surprise, they actually fit. And so I got those holes threaded. There's a plate right here that they welded, and it's really thick. They welded a plate on here and then welded the, the finished arm on the front. That way, this tubing is actually pretty thin and they made this whole thing. They did all this in-house to my understanding. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pipe or something like it and I'm going to mount it right here. I'm going to bend it and make it fit under this arm and I'm going to mount a plate up against that plate that will have the pivot point on it. Now, trying to mount this up here somewhere I even thought about trying to like have the mechanism slide inside so it was like this and then I could pull it out and kick it down and have a kickstand. That didn't really work. This is terribly ugly and I didn't want it under here. It's too low. So I can tuck it right under here with a knee bend in it. Then I can kick it out. Boom. Perfect. So my goal is to make a plate that fits behind here with a pivot on the bottom and then I'll have to probably put a solid end on here and make me a pivot for that. Attach me a spring mechanism of some kind. I haven't figured that out yet. I'll figure that out when I'm done. Maybe on the back. I don't know. Figure it out. But anyway, that's what I'm working on. This thing does not have a kickstand. And I was trying to figure out how to make a kickstand for it. So anyway. I just thought it was funny. I, I tried to get 
this to work with the pipe tap and it's just not quite deep enough to be a regular thread for this style bolt. You can actually see it. It's just ever so slightly oversized because that's a tapered cutter. Um, anyway, so I'm going to probably cut these off and uh, make up my plate, weld my pieces together. I just wanted to give you an introduction to what I was working on. So, wow, I got lucky with those. Well, it's a new day. I spent a long time last night making a big mess here on my mill. And I have successfully milled this giant mess looking thing. Um, so I took a scrap piece of aluminum and I realized that those two holes that are in the back of that bike, that plate is actually mounted at an angle. So the front face is flat, which is where my thumb is at, but the other side is at an angle. And then that corner radius I had to cut out. Anyway, so that mounts on the bike. And then this piece of metal right here is actually a piece of, I believe it's steel. It might be stainless, to be honest. Or I think it's regular steel. Um, it's really hard, though, so it could be stainless. But anyway, it was a bracket that someone else had machined that I had laying in my pile of stuff. I believe Robert K. Hansen did it. The guy I actually got the mill from. Thank you, sir. And uh, rest in peace as always, my friend. And uh, yeah, here's the other piece. It was a really highly engineered, very well machined piece. And it actually was already like a hinge. So I thought to myself, well, if I can get this silly thing in here. Sorry, bad camera angle. Anyway, there we go. So I thought, yeah, I'll use that as a hinge. Now on the motorcycle, I wanted the uh, the actual foot here to be parallel, or straight, I should say, with the uh, bracket here when it's up. But when it's down, you can see it's actually at an angle, because the bike is going to lean. So this actually needs to be at an angle. So basically, I used these parts. And I wish I had a little bit longer piece of aluminum. I kind of ran out. This is actually the piece of aluminum that was used to machine the uh, uh, CNC coil winder version 1. And uh, I milled a slot in here for that to mount. And then I drilled a hole at an angle and put a piece of steel in there that went through a hole that was in that bracket. And that pretty well holds it in there. Can't really go anywhere now. And then I took this pipe and I smashed this end and then I beat it with a hammer until I got it to go into there as far as it could go. I'm probably going to drill a hole here just to match the hole that's in that bracket inside there. But anyway, so that mounts to that, that mounts to that, and then I was trying to make my daughter understand a over the center spring. So I wanted the kickstand to come over the center a little bit and then there would be a spring that would hold it in position. So this was my diagram here. If this is my pivot point and my mounting of my spring is here, then if I hold the bottom part here, it's going to want to go that way, right? But if it's on this side of the center point here, then it's going to, it's going to want to go this way. And then if I had a stop here that won't let it go any further, it could sit like this. So I was trying to figure out how I was going to make that work. And after actually building the thing, this is what I came up with. So, mounted my spring in a completely different location than I had originally intended. But that leads me to this bracket. So as you can see, these are actually screwed in here and mounted in here at an angle. This is just a dowel pin that I made that's sitting in here. But this dowel pin, let me just put this together. This dowel pin goes in here like this. So now we have ourselves a pivot, right? And then this angle needs to be matched with this plate. So this actually gets mounted in this hole to help hold that. And I drilled two holes right there. Now you can see when I actually do get this all mounted together, you can see that my bolt and my pivot are at an angle because that's what the angle of the shaft is. So when this thing pivots, the spring actually pivots on a 
proper direction. So anyway, so I'm gonna bolt this on here and put it together. There's a long bolt that goes in here. I gotta find the rest of these parts. And then I'll show you the final result. But uh, whew, we're getting closer. This is a pretty hobbled together, interesting looking mess, but honestly, it's pretty dang rigid. This piece was very well machined and uh, machined by hand, probably by, like I said, Robert K. Hansen. So I don't know what it's for and I'll never use it. So boom, perfect for supporting that angled weight that I need. So let me put this together and I'll show you the final result before I mount it on the bike. This is what me and Dexter built yesterday, but we broke it. You know, the Nate and Newton's cradle, but we forgot to do one thing, which was mount two points so the balls go everywhere. <laughs> anyway, just a simple idea. So I was looking for my springs, looking at my springs, looking at my springs, and uh, Elijah decided to start playing with my springs. What are you doing, Elijah? I'm fishing. Fishing for springs? Yeah. So he made a fishing pole. And now he's uh, he's fishing for spring. So this was a game that he made up all by himself. I like this. What's your best catch for the day? Which is the best spring that you that looks like the best spring you caught for the day? Yeah. Man, that's a big one. All right, now throw him back so you can catch him again. Uh oh, you broke your fishing pole. <laughs> anyway, all right, back to work. Well, there it is. That is the kickstand. I need to probably put a bushing in there, plastic or other. But now, this is up, which is actually sitting against the uh, bottom of the bike. So you can see, well, it's got a little bit too much friction, but it does pull it up. And if you go over center, it'll stay down. I gotta put something in there. I tried to oil it, but it didn't really help. Anyway, it does stay up. And it does go over over center. You can see the pin is the center. So there's about center, and then there's over center. So let's mount it on the bike. And actually see how it goes. Oh, by the way, I did put this little rubber foot on here at this funky angle, but I'm going to have to put a plate on the bike because the back of this thing hits the back of the bike. Uh, I'll show you what I mean and that'll help keep it from going too far backwards. What you looking at Malachi? I'm looking at my uh, <laughs> I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> He's hilarious. All right, well, there it is. The bike is officially on its kickstand. I do have to finish up a few things. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to lean it against the wall. And kind of show you that this guy just sits right there. Look at that, like it's supposed to be there. You almost can't even see it. You wouldn't even know what it is if you weren't familiar with it. Now I could put a, uh, a little thing sticking out, you know, from here so I could kick it with my foot, but to be quite honest, I'm probably just going to do it like that. But look at that, it's sitting on its own kickstand. Exciting stuff, exciting stuff. Took me a while to figure out you know, just exactly where to put this thing. Yeah, my kickstand. That's what I was making. Cool, right? Wow, it took a while. <laughs> You're funny, Malachi. You can see that it's not tight yet either, but you can see that it hits here. So if I only wanted it to go about straight, which I do, so that my foot is actually flat, otherwise it's at an angle, and the bike stands up a little taller, which I want, so I'm just going to unscrew that and put a little plate back here and allow myself for just a little more, a little more, uh, something to sit. So this needs to be tightened, of course. But anyway, that's it. Man, that just looks slick, doesn't it? I'll probably put me a little rubber bumper right here so it sits against that, uh, but yeah. 
Yeah, Malachi. Can I get the springs down in the garage? Because I'm going to play with them. The springs? Yeah. You want to play with my springs? Yeah. Alright, I'll let you play with my springs. Let me, me let me finish this video, is that okay? Okay. You can see a little bit of the ugliness from the front, to be fair, but it's fine. Anyway. That's it. She works. It works, Malachi. It works. This thing has never had a kickstand. So finally, it finally does. Alright, thanks for watching. God bless. Have a good day. It's actually my wife's anniversary. Me and my wife's 12 years. Look what came out of it. <laughs> one of those right there. One of those right there came out of it. <laughs> Say bye. Bye. Okay, watch the Bible more. I mean, read the Bible more. God bless. See you later. Bye-bye. What are you doing? What are you doing? Looking at Target sales. Oh, yeah? You should look at this camera because I'm filming this. <laughs> I don't want to be filmed. You are being filmed. Well, what is it? What is it today? Sunday. The what? May 31st. And yeah, what about this day is so important? Sure. You don't know? No. Loud noises in the background? Yeah. Kind of hurt my ears. Yeah. I think you flinched. I did. Oh, cool. <laughs> I'll go back and watch. Mm. Now, how do you like me this long? Because I love you. Oh, she loves me. That's cool. What, baby? This is another thing that came out of it. Anyway, got anything to say? I love you. Okay, see you later, bye. <laughs> Alright, well, I ended this video already once, but I'm going to tell you I'm filming this at the end of this anyway. So it's really, really hard to make a kickstand for a dirt bike and actually make it look elegant. And, well, quite frankly, I somehow managed to do that. So, I did, uh, I did put a piece of metal down here like I said I was going to do. Which makes that work a lot better. I did shim some shims in between there and I greased it up really good. And I put that piece of metal right there to help that from going backwards too far. Oh, it looks so... It looks, it actually, it looks weird, the kickstand, just purely because of how it's, you know, just how it sits. It looks fine. I'm not saying it looks bad. I'm just saying it's weird to see such a long extension off the bottom of such a high center. But, um, yeah, kick this thing over. Got to lean the bike a little bit the other way. And bam, just look at it. Look how slick. You literally won't even know. Let's see if I can set the bike over. It's out completely. I can't. Do, 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 do. Hold on. Let me put the kickstand back down. I can get it with my foot. But I'll probably just use my hand most of the time. Hold on, let me set this up differently. Okay, I'm about as far back as I can get with the wide angle. Just look how slick that looks. I mean, if you didn't know it, it wasn't factory, you probably wouldn't know. Except for when you get under here and you realize how janky it is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I took some aluminum scraps and actually rubbed it on here and just polished it up a little bit. I'll get some other stuff and polish it better later. Maybe hit this little spot so it actually looks a little better. So the only thing left to do is I, I still kind of want to put a, a kink right here. So originally it was going to be up higher, come down and follow this line. And if I just kink it right here, I can take this off without too much trouble maybe um, and kink it. And then this rubber stop will hit the bottom. But for now, I'll just put me a little tiny piece of rubber on there to keep it from bouncing. But it could use a little bit more spring tension. I'm afraid if I do off-roading on this guy, it's going to want to come down. But uh, I guess if I really wanted to, I could put a zip tie on here if I do some hardcore off-roading, huh? Anyway, 
So yeah, so now that hits that piece of metal instead of that plastic. So that should help out a lot. Can't complain, man. Can't complain. That's That's pretty sweet. Okay. Thanks for watching. Second intro, exit, whoever, whatever. I got multiple entrances and exits on this guy. So, God bless you guys. Read the Bible more. Have a good day. Bye bye. Woo! Would not know that was not factory.
silent movie.